One of the most common things that you will do as a software developer is to find the most efficient solutions to the problems that you face. These solutions will come in the form of an algorithm. An algorithm is basically a set of steps that you do in order to solve a problem. In order to compare if one algorithm is more efficient than another to solve a problem, you need to analyze them somehow. That analysis is called complexity analysis, and that's why it's one of the most common topics during technical interviews. You need to do this comparison independently from the machine, the language, or the compiler that the algorithm, algorithm will work, because that way you are comparing exactly the, the, the algorithm against another. One way to do it is using the RAM model. Basically, the RAM model, what it, what it says is that you will take each operation inside the algorithm and count them as one step. There are operations that are considered complex, like uh, loops and subroutines, and you don't count them. You just count, if you have to do a for loop and you have certain steps there, you will count each of the steps per every iteration. That way, at the end, you can uh, understand how many operations has one algorithm against another based on the number of inputs. Then you can do a chart and graph if I have an input of one element, two elements, or n elements, uh, how many numbers of steps you will need to execute to, in order to find the solution using this algorithm. And that way you get a chart showing this. In order to understand how an algorithm works, you need to understand different scenarios that it runs on. It's not necessary to list all the scenarios, but it's usually useful to get at least the worst, the best, and the average case. From all of these three, usually the most useful one is the worst case scenario, because the average is tricky to find, and the best scenario is usually too idealistic. So the worst case scenario is what we try to optimize uh, upon. So when you're using the RAM model, you can then chart the problem size against the number of steps and get a graph showing what are the number of steps based on that problem size for the average case, the worst case, or the best case. As we mentioned before, we're usually more interested in the worst case, but these are the three common cases that we are usually analyzing. So what we do with the big O notation is to find a function that would serve as an upper bound for each of them. So for example, in the case of worst case, we can find maybe a function that will run like this, and this will serve as an upper bound. That would mean that if you multiply the, this function by a constant, can, it will always be larger than what the worst case is going to be. And you can do that for each of the scenarios. So you can also do it for the average case, or you can also do it for the best case. And then you can buy the, you can get the big O notation of that scenario. Of course, there is also beside the big O notation, there are also other useful notations like uh, omega or like big O omega or big theta that basically will be in the case of big o omega finding instead the lower bound. So this could be the lower bound and you can do this well for each of the scenarios. So besides finding also the big O, you can also find other type of notation like uh, big omega where big omega would be the lower bound, the function that represents the lower bound to the function that you're looking in that case. Then uh, you can also have big theta that is basically uh, both an upper and lower bound for the same function. It's hard and many times unnecessary to count the number of steps that an algorithm would take. So what you are more interested in is in the growth rate, how much the algorithm number of steps grows based on the input of the problem. So for example, if we get the number of steps being the function tn, that could be also time, but the number of steps based on the input size, we could get something with the RAM model, like, yeah, this is going to be 231, 231n squared plus 56n plus a big constant. When we are doing the uh, big O, we don't care too much about the constants because you can always find a function that is giving a large enough constant with n square will be enough. So that's why we only care about the growth rate because we can find something, I don't know, maybe, you know, 3 million plus n square and we can then find a upper bound for the problem that, you, that we're looking at. So most of the time, since we are mostly focused on the worst case scenario, which is the most useful one, as we said before, we, the most interesting bound to find is the upper bound, and that's how we get to the big O notation. Big O notation is also not only used for estimating the time that the algorithm will take, but it's also considering it is also useful for uh, memory analysis. 
So for example, if you're looking at the number, the, the maximum number in the list, if the list is not sorted, then you need to go one by one, comparing one of the elements, one to know if that element is the maximum and comparing against the stored maximum. So that way it would be B goal of N. If you need to print all the elements in a matrix that is N by N, you need to go it one by one and print in that, right? So it would be N squared. And there are also model complex uh, demonstrations that can be left for other videos. So now that you know how the big O gets calculated, how do you use it? Is it relevant? Why? Why is? What does it mean if that algorithm is big O of n, big O of n squared, big O of n log n? How do you calculate them? So if you are still interested, just keep watching the next videos.